Brazil is full of natural wonders. It is the most biodiverse country, a small world within our planet. Some Brazilian places are internationally famous. Many others await discovery. Being the largest country in South America, there are countless hidden and unexplored corners in Brazil. Some of its animals are familiar to us. but others have not reached that level of fame. Next, we will showcase Brazil's most amazing destinations and its most fascinating animals, from the most photographed to the least known. we have uncovered surprises we couldn't have anticipated. Pantanal Mato Grosso and Mato Grosso do Sol. It is the largest floodplain on the planet. Starting in southwestern Brazil, the area reaches into parts of Bolivia and Paraguay. One of the best places in the world to observe animal species in their natural habitat. It is a mix of biodiverse landscapes that intertwine and change with the seasons. Here lives one of the world's largest populations of giant anteaters. They are solitary and insectivorous animals, eating almost exclusively ants and termites. After a gestation period of about 190 days, the female gives birth to a single offspring. It clings to the mother's back for about one year. This position offers protection from potential predators. The baby's fur blends with the mother's. In the Pantanal rivers, we find the giant otter, the world's largest otter species. They are very social animals that seem to enjoy being in company.
Family groups provide them with protection and a way to defend their territory. Aquatic hunting is one of their specialties. They mostly eat fish they catch while diving. Despite being formidable predators, giant otters must be wary of jaguars and caimans. These waters are home to hundreds of thousands of yakare caimans. Their lifespan in the wild exceeds 30 years. When adults, their diet is based on fish, birds, and small mammals. They are opportunistic hunters, feeding on any prey they can catch and swallow. In times of hunger, they might try to hunt capybara offspring one of the mammals of the Pantanal. It's the world's largest rodent, an excellent swimmer that spends a lot of time in the water. Birds are often seen perched on their backs, pecking parasites, or just resting. Females give birth to litters of between two and eight offspring. These are precocious and able to swim shortly after birth. At a noise or unusual movement, the capybara usually remains completely still for a few seconds. It could be a jaguar, Latin America's largest feline. Pantanal specimens have specialized in aquatic hunting. They stalk their prey from tree branches. Unlike other felines, they don't avoid water. An unsuspecting capybara runs the risk of becoming a victim. But the jaguar is capable of confronting other predators. It also has a taste for caimans. It's a hunter that approaches its prey stealthily. And when close, it strikes with explosive force and speed.
Brazil hosts the world's largest jaguar population. In the Pantanal, this species' high density is due to its vastness and the abundance of prey. The Amazon Rainforest It's the largest tropical rainforest in the world. About 60% of the Amazon is located in Brazil, while the rest is in other South American countries. This forest is so vast that there are still large areas untouched by humans. The challenging geography and the warm, humid climate make exploration a challenge. It's easy to get lost with the high density of trees and vegetation. especially in the forest untouched by humans. Everything can look the same. Where the forest canopy is densest, darkness prevails, even during the day. These unexplored spaces are seen as biological treasures, as they may host species still unknown. The Amazon is one of the places with the most diversity of animals and plants. Hundreds of mammal species live here. Among them are dozens of primate species. Like the curious pygmy marmoset, the smallest primate in the world. In lusher areas, both three-toed and two-toed sloths are found. Sloths have coarse, thick fur, long limbs, and strong claws that allow them to hang from branches easily. Due to their low energy diet, these animals have a reduced metabolism and move very slowly. They prefer life in the trees. Sloths rarely come down to the ground, only doing so to defecate or to change trees if there are no nearby branches to move through. Surprisingly, they are competent swimmers, especially during the rainy season when the forests flood.
The harpy eagle, one of the largest birds of prey on the planet, has sloths as part of its diet. In various indigenous cultures of the Amazon, it's considered a spirit. It prefers the dense areas of the forest, being found in the treetops. Near rivers, lagoons, and wetlands, we find the Amazonian tapir, the largest terrestrial mammal of the Amazon. They are usually elusive and cautious. Though, some individuals show curiosity. Water fascinates them, and they have a tendency to appear and disappear unexpectedly. The trees of the Amazon are as dazzling as its animals. Massive roots support the Seba as they climb to towering heights. Their robust appearance is no coincidence. These trees have been on Earth for millions of years. Other trees, like the Shihuahuaco, live up to a thousand years. Another Amazonian giants are the Lianas. They begin their life on the forest floor, but quickly seek to reach the tree canopy to receive direct sunlight. Amazon River It is the world's most voluminous river, representing the largest river system on our planet. Such a significant impact results in altered salinity patterns in the Atlantic Ocean. South America is traversed by this river, with Brazil proudly housing a significant segment. Over 1,100 tributaries contribute to its astounding diversity.
The Amazon dolphin is one of the most unique animals that inhabit this river. Various factors can intensify its unique pink shade. Unlike marine dolphins, it has a flexible neck that allows it to move its head from side to side. Often, they prefer solitude or the company of just a few others. However, they are very playful and curious animals. Green anacondas are more comfortable in the wet and swampy areas of the Amazon, where they stalk their prey. The world's heaviest snakes and one of the longest. They have a dark olive green color with oval black spots distributed all over the body. With two dark stripes that extend from the eye to the sides of the jaw. Water environments suit them best, turning their significant size into an advantage for more fluid movement. It's common to find the young in the trees. In order to avoid predators and hunt smaller prey, this strategy has evolved as a means of survival. Additionally, there are more reptiles to be aware of in the Amazon basin. Snakes, like the green parrot snake, are not a major threat to humans. Chironius exoletus is not venomous. Neither are the false corals. But one should be cautious with venomous snakes, whose fearsome appearance warns us of the risk of approaching. In trees near Amazonian rivers and streams, there might be Bothrops bilineatus, called green hararaca in Brazil. It's a venomous, arboreal snake that frequently bites the inhabitants of this vast region. One of the most common snakes is Bothrops atrox, known in Brazil as Hararaca of the North. Jungle and flooded areas are the typical habitats for this species. But it also lives in areas somewhat more modified by man, which is why it's often involved in many envenomations in the Amazon. The Southern American Bushmaster, or Surucucu, is the largest venomous viper in South America. Various species of true corals are also venomous, although they tend to be shy.
If we descend into the waters of the Amazon, we come across the electric eel. It is capable of generating an electric charge of up to 600 volts, used for hunting and defense. They prefer shallow, muddy, or sandy waters. Other aquatic animals are piranhas, which are often fished and eaten. And the Arapaima or Paiche, one of the largest river fish. Some specimens are true river monsters. They reach impressive sizes and have considerable weight. Meeting of the Waters, Amazon. It's a unique natural phenomenon in which two differently colored rivers converge. Near the city of Manaus, the dark waters of the Negro River meet the brown and turbid waters of the Solomoes, a stretch of the Amazon. A strong contrast emerges that's easily noticeable. The waters of these two rivers don't mix immediately due to differences in temperature, speed, and density. With a slower flow and warmer waters, the Negro River contrasts the Solomoes River, which is colder and flows more rapidly. Only after traveling a long distance together do they start to mix. Cerrado Located in central Brazil, and spanning numerous states, this region stands as one of the most biodiverse biomes in the country. Characterized by vast savannas with scattered trees and shrubs, with a combination of plateaus, low hills, and plains. The Whistling Heron. The Blue-Fronted Parrot. The Green-Barred Woodpecker. or the Seriema, are some of the bird species that inhabit this reserve. With its extensive grassland area, it also provides an ideal habitat for the rhea, the largest bird in South America. Part of this great animal diversity includes its more than 200 species of mammals, such as the marsh deer, the peccary,
or the black tufted marmoset. One of the predators of the Cerrado is the maned wolf. It's the largest wild canine in South America. They are solitary and very territorial animals. However, they are not aggressive towards humans and tend to be elusive. Iguazu Falls, Brazil and Argentina border. Most of these waterfalls are on Argentine territory. But the views from the Brazilian side are equally spectacular. Getting close to this massive water torrent is an extraordinary experience. The Iguazu Falls are a system composed of about 275 individual falls. Devil's Throat stands as the most imposing. It forms tall mist clouds that can be seen from afar. This national park is also home to numerous animals, like the playful coatis, which are common to see in the area. Lensois Marinhenses National Park, Marinhau. The first thing that catches the eye in this national park are its massive white sand dunes, resembling sheets. It's a desert unlike any other in the world, with freshwater lagoons of blue or emerald green formed between the dunes. Despite its desert-like appearance, Lensois Marinhensis receives a rainfall level several times greater than the Sahara. During the rainy season, water accumulates in the depressions between the dunes. There are dozens of lagoons up to the coast. Some are shallow making it easy to walk between them. Mount Roraima, border of Brazil, Venezuela, and Guyana. It's one of the oldest and most magical geological formations in the world.
Roraima is located in a mountainous area that's hard to access. Hence, it's scarcely explored. Estimated at 2 billion years old, the plateau boasts flat tops and steep sides. On top, there's a vast moon-like landscape of bare rock and eroded valleys, dotted with springs. The few plants that grow here are not found anywhere else in the world. Due to constant erosion and heavy rainfall, numerous canyons and peculiar rocks have formed. The expedition from Venezuela takes about a week, and from Brazil or Guyana, there are no trails. Abroyos Marine National Park, Bahia. Nestled in the Atlantic Ocean, the location belongs to the Abrolhos Archipelago, known for its volcanic islands. This area has one of the highest marine biodiversities in the South Atlantic. Including the largest coral reefs in this oceanic sector, This park is one of Brazil's main hotspots for spotting humpback whales. Mother and calf have a close relationship. During the first few months of life, the calf relies entirely on the mother for feeding on her milk. Humpback whales have large, knobby heads. Their mouths are wide. And instead of teeth, they have baleen plates they use to filter plankton, small fish, and krill. On the underside, they have ventral pleats that run from the jaw to the navel. They often breach and fall back, possibly as a form of play. When inhaling and exhaling through their blowholes, they exchange large amounts of air in a short period. Moving their flippers in the water aids in maneuverability, thermoregulation, and possibly communication. Fernando de Noronha, Pernambuco. 
This Atlantic paradise is located off the northeastern coast of Brazil. It's a volcanic archipelago, composed of numerous islands and islets. Considered one of the most idyllic and exclusive destinations in the country. The iconic peaks of Moro Dois Ermaus, rising from the ocean, are among the most emblematic spots on the islands. Fernando de Noronha is frequented by divers, as it is home to rich marine life, including nurse sharks. Dolphin Bay has one of the highest concentrations of bottlenose dolphins on the planet. Among the most beautiful beaches in the world, Sancho Beach often holds a prominent place. It features fine golden sand, crystal clear waters, and is surrounded by tropical vegetation. The cliffs form a kind of natural amphitheater, making it feel isolated and almost private. Chapada Diamantina National Park, Bahia. The unique combination of plateaus, valleys, caves, rivers, and waterfalls in northwestern Brazil creates this geological and biological wonder. It dates back about 1.2 billion years, silently witnessing the planet's evolution. High plateaus and rugged cliffs in the area have been carved out by the forces of time and nature. The name Diamantina is no accident. During the 19th century, this region was the epicenter of a diamond rush that attracted thousands of prospectors and adventurers. One of Brazil's tallest waterfalls, Cachoeira da Fumaca, is located within this park. In various Chapada Diamantina locations, rocky walls are adorned with these rock paintings, some of which are thousands of years old. Bonito, Mato Grosso do Sol. It is a municipality and one of Brazil's main nature destinations. An ideal place to observe aquatic life in locations like the Rio de Prada, where the waters are intensely clear.
Not far away is the Sukuri River, with a strong sky-blue hue. With transparent waters and great depths, the Laguna Misteriosa is a must-visit for diving enthusiasts. The clarity of the lagoon's waters allow for remarkable visibility deep within. Underground water sources, combined with the presence of calcium carbonate in the soil, contribute to this transparency. Serra de Rio de Rastro, Santa Catarina. Forming a section of the broader Sierra General, which crosses segments of South America, lies this mountain range. Its mountains offer beautiful landscapes, especially from their peaks. The roads are filled with tight curves and steep inclines. They are some of the most challenging roads in Brazil. Ascending or descending the mountain reveals a change in vegetation. Moving from Atlantic forests in the lower areas to fields and grasslands in the higher elevations. Rain or fog conditions make some roads dangerous. Given its elevation, this Sierra experiences rapid and dramatic climatic changes. Costa dos Corais, Alagoas, and Pernambuco. Located in northeastern Brazil, this region stands out for its coral reefs. The reefs create natural pools at low tide, providing an opportunity to swim in calm, clear waters. Part of the Costa dos Corais is dedicated to the conservation of mangroves, Atlantic forest, and of course, corals. The biological diversity of the area is so vast that new species are still being discovered in the reefs. Parque Nacional the Chapada dos Guimarães, Mato Grosso. This conservation area is characterized by its diverse geography, spanning high plateaus, canyons, plains, and forested areas. It is home to several waterfalls and reddish cliffs. Geological experts believe that Chapada dos Guimarães started forming over a billion years ago. In this natural park reside some of the most beautiful and unique bird species of Brazil. The Toco Toucan prefers clearings and forest edges.
they have a thin blue ring of skin around their eyes. Pairs or small groups are the typical groupings for them. In terms of length, the hyacinth macaw stands as the world's largest parrot. A robust beak equips them to crack nuts and seeds effortlessly. Despite their wild origins, these birds display a friendly and curious nature. This bird species is endangered due to habitat loss, hunting, and illegal trade. The blue and yellow macaw prefers jungle and savanna areas. After finding a partner, these birds remain lifelong companions. Sociable, playful, and curious birds. The scarlet macaw is typically found in lowland rainforests. Their cognitive abilities are evident in their exceptional intelligence and capacity for problem solving. Extremely sociable and noisy birds. Itaim Bezinho Canyon, Rio Grande do Sol. You can find this spot nestled within the Aparados da Serra National Park. Nestled within the Aparados da Serra National Park, it is the park's most famous and accessible canyon, often the highlight of tourists' visits. Formed through the erosion of the Paradises River over millions of years, the area's geology reveals striking rock formations and stratifications. Around the canyon, one can find a lush expanse of Atlantic forest, home to centennial trees and various unique species. Parque Nacional de Chapada das Mesas, Maranhão. Flat and tall plateaus define the landscape of this surface. They rise abruptly from ground level, forming canyons. This park was founded to conserve the region's biomes, untouched vegetation. One of the most astonishing formations is Moro do Chapéu. Due to its great height and flat top, it is the most emblematic view of Chapada das Mesas. Christ the Redeemer, Rio de Janeiro. Atop Rio de Janeiro's Mount Corcovado, this statue takes center stage.
From its lofty position, one can behold a spectacular view of the city, its beaches, mountains, and the Guanabara Bay. The statue represents Jesus Christ with open arms in a posture that seems to embrace the city and all its inhabitants and visitors. It symbolizes the warmth, hospitality, and friendly spirit of the Brazilian people. Moreover, it is a symbol of the Christian faith, deeply rooted in the country's culture. Christ the Redeemer was designed and built by Brazilian, French, and Romanian engineers, sculptors, and architects, inaugurated on October 12th, 1931, after nearly a decade of work. Parati, Rio de Janeiro. Between waves and colonial buildings, this city unfolds its rich history. During the Brazilian colonial period, Paradi was the site of the country's most important export port. The cobblestone streets and well-preserved houses offer a journey back in time to Brazil's past. Parati is situated in a bay on the coast of Verde, a region surrounded by mountains, covered in dense forests. Its bay is home to dozens of islands, many of which are uninhabited and have idyllic beaches. Ana Vilhanas National Park, Amazon. This natural gem can be found deep within the Brazilian Amazon. Stretching along the Rio Negro, one of the main tributaries of the Amazon River, It is one of the world's largest river archipelagos, with over 400 islands. The landscape is predominantly that of flooded rainforest. During the dry season, white sandy beaches emerge alongside the river, contrasting with its dark water and vegetation. A distinctive feature of the Rio Negro is its dark tea-colored water, influenced by decomposing organic compounds. Caatinga. In the northeastern region of the country, this unique biome covers a significant portion of the land area. Thorny shrubs, cacti, and deciduous trees dominate. A Caatinga is essential for the recovery of a bird that nearly vanished. The Lear's Macaw. This bird greatly resembles the hyacinth macaw, but is a different species.
it was on the brink of extinction, with fewer than 250 individuals in the 1980s. But, thanks to various protected areas, it has persisted. Delta da Parnaíba, Maranhão, and Piauí. The Parnaíba River flows into the Atlantic Ocean, forming this vast delta. A wide stretch of mangroves and sand dunes defines this area. Islands and dunes continuously transform and shift because of the river-sea interrelationship. In the area, one can spot the scarlet ibis, which comes to feed on crustaceans. Jericho Akorara National Park, Kiara. Jericho Akorara is renowned for its stunning sand dunes. Some reach considerable heights. Here lie some of Brazil's most beautiful beaches. Within the park, there are several freshwater lagoons. The area also features unique coastal vegetation and mangroves, with various species of flora and fauna. Porto de Galinas, Pernambuco Widely visited by tourists, it is one of the most famous destinations in northeastern Brazil. The name Porto de Galinhas stems from a time when slaves were transported illegally and hidden under baskets of chickens. During low tide, Reefs near the beach form natural pools accessible by foot or boat. Muro Alto is a beach located north of Porto de Galinhas. Its name is derived from the walls of reefs that protect much of its expanse. Serres Harais, Tocantins. They are part of Brazil's largest mountain range. In this region, dry landscapes blend beautifully with the translucent waters of cascades and streams. Most of these rocks formed through slow changes over a long period. It is one of Brazil's emerging tourist regions, less known compared to other more famous destinations. Cabo Frio, Rio de Janeiro. Proximity to the city of Rio defines this city, making it a major hub in the lakes region. Situated on a peninsula separating the Atlantic Ocean from the Ara Ruama Lagoon,
characterized by long, white, sandy beaches, dunes, and a series of saltwater lakes nearby. Located in a tropical area, the waters tend to be cooler than in other parts of the state of Rio de Janeiro. Alapao State Park, Tocantins. Small mountain ranges, savannas, golden sand dunes, and numerous waterways merge in this protected area. The dunes are one of its main attractions. Especially at sunset, when the orange and gold tones provide an unforgettable show. Chapada dos Valladeiros National Park, Goyas. Rising above the land, this reserve covers the highest plain in central Brazil. Brazilians come here for hiking and tend to enjoy its waterfalls. There are deep canyons with vertical walls and rivers at the bottom. This park is one of those that protect the Cerrado biome. Numerous wildlife species also live here. One of them is the king vulture, a scavenger bird. Within the Chapada dos Feadeiros lies the Valley of the Moon, with rock formations similar to lunar landscapes. They've been sculpted over millions of years by the constant flow of the São Miguel River. Along the river, there are several natural pools and small waterfalls where visitors often take a refreshing dip. Oao Pessoa, Paraíba A green paradise in the heart of Brazil. This is how this verdant city presents itself. Its architectural heritage reflects its history, dating back to the early days of Portuguese colonization in Brazil. Situated on the country's eastern coast, it's the easternmost point of the Americas. Because of this location, it's referred to as the city where the sun first rises. On certain beaches of Joao Pessoa, during low tide, natural pools form in the coral reefs, popular for bathing and observing marine life in shallow waters. Isa Grande, Rio de Janeiro. Midway between Sao Paulo and Rio, this tropical island emerges. It's a relatively quiet place, away from the hustle and bustle of big cities.
combining dense jungles, white sandy beaches, and clear waters. One of its charms in the absence of cars and roads, hoping to maintain its pristine environment. Altar do Chao, Pera. On the banks of the Tapajos River, a tributary of the Amazon, lies this charming village. The Tapajos River sets a scene that seems more coastal paradise than Amazonian corner. Highlighting the Love Island in front of the village, during the dry season, it connects to the main beach via a sand strip. In the horizon, the Amazon rainforest creates a lush green backdrop. Serra de Bocaina National Park, Rio de Janeiro, and Sao Paulo. In this vast natural domain, flora and fauna thrive in a protected setting. Its geography is mountainous, belonging to the Serra de Mar. Featuring diverse vegetation coverage, including the Atlantic Forest, one of the world's richest and most endangered ecosystems. The park has historical importance, as it was a crucial route during the gold mining boom in Brazil. Espraiado Canyon, Santa Catarina. This deep gorge carved by erosion on the plateau of the Serra Catarinense. The region surrounding the canyon is covered by Araucaria forests, a type of pine native to the highlands of southern Brazil. Urubici and the surrounding region are known for having some of Brazil's lowest temperatures. Caracol Park, Rio Grande do Sul This protected area is located in the Sierra Gaucha, an area with rugged topography. Without a doubt, the Caracol Waterfall stands as the park's most prized attraction. The park is surrounded by the dense Atlantic forest, home to great biodiversity. Corumbau, Bahia. Clear waters and mangroves define this oasis of tranquility in the heart of Bahia State. Being a still little visited place, the beaches offer a peaceful and relaxing ambience. Ponta do Corumbau is one of the spots to visit, a long sandbank stretching out into the sea.
Rio de Janeiro, Rio de Janeiro. The vitality, population, and fame make this city one of the most important in Brazil. Located on the southeast coast, it was the capital of Brazil until 1960, when it moved to Brasilia. Sugarloaf Mountain is one of Rio's most recognizable landmarks, situated at the entrance of Guanabara Bay. Copacabana is the city's most famous beach and one of Brazil's most iconic and renowned places. This beach is celebrated for its golden sand and its mountainous backdrop. Ipanema is another of Rio's celebrated beaches, a spot to sunbathe, play beach volleyball, and socialize. The Metropolitan Cathedral of São Sebastião boasts a unique cone-shaped architectural design. Maracanã is one of the most illustrious soccer stadiums, hosting numerous significant events, including World Cup Finals. The Church of Our Lady of Candelaria, surrounded by modern buildings, is one of Rio's most extensive and significant churches. In Rio's Santa Teresa neighborhood, there's the colorful Saint Laurent staircase made of various shapes and sizes. A religious highlight in Rio is the Basilica Shrine of Our Lady of the Rock. According to tradition, the landowner experienced a series of miracles that saved his life. To commemorate them, he decided to build a small chapel on top of the rock in 1635. Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo. It's the largest city in Brazil and one of the world's most extensive metropolises. Located on a plateau, giving it a more temperate climate than other Brazilian cities. Sao Paulo is a melting pot of cultures. It has welcomed immigrants from all over the world, including Italians, Japanese, Spaniards, and Arabs. The Metropolitan Cathedral is the city's main religious center and one of the world's most extensive neo-Gothic temples.
Estesau de Luz, completed in 1901, exemplifies the city's historic architecture. The Independence Museum is dedicated to Brazilian history, focusing especially on Brazil's independence. Pico Paraná, Paraná. In the mountain range of the Sierra del Mar, which runs along Brazil's southeast coast, stands this peak, the southern region's highest mountain. It is part of the Ibitira Kire mountain range, a subset of the Sierra del Mar. The area is characterized by tall peaks, deep valleys, and dense Atlantic forest vegetation. Punao River, Rio Grande del Norte. The mix of watercolors in this river gives it a strange appearance. Red and dark tones in the water emerge from the mix of fresh currents and the ocean's saline waters. Organic substances released by the vegetation, such as tannins, give the water darker or brownish shades. Oro Preto, Minas Gerais. Well-preserved colonial architecture and Baroque churches make this city a trip back in time. It was the epicenter of the 18th century gold rush, during which vast amounts of gold were extracted from the region. The city was originally named Vila Rica, before being renamed Oro Preto, referring to the color of gold mixed with impurities found in the mines. Salvador Bahia Rooted in a rich Afro-Brazilian history and culture, this city is also a beacon of colonial architecture. It was founded in 1549 by the Portuguese and became a thriving port for trade. Many devotees flock to the Church of Our Lord of Bonfim as a renowned religious pilgrimage destination. The Fort of Santa Maria at Porto de Barra Beach is one of several historic forts overlooking the city's coast. Another recognizable emblem is the Barra Lighthouse, built in the 17th century and one of the oldest on the American continent. This historic circular structure is the Fort of São Marcelo, built on a small reef in the middle of the Bay of All Saints. Pelourinho is Salvador's historic center, one of the largest and best preserved colonial architectural sets in America. It features cobblestone streets and colorful colonial buildings, many of which date back to the 17th and 18th centuries. Tabuleiro Waterfall Minas Gerais As the tallest waterfall in Minas Gerais, it also holds a position among the highest in all of Brazil.
At the bottom, there is a lagoon where one can enjoy a swim. Gramado, Rio Grande do Sul. The influence of German and Italian colonization is evident in the charming architecture that adorns this city. With a European ambiance evident in the cuisine and festivities, it was founded in 1954 but its history dates back much further. With colonization by German and Italian immigrants in the 19th century, Teresopolis, Rio de Janeiro, to the Serra dos Orgaos National Park, this municipality is distinguished by its mountainous terrain. Teresopolis is named after Empress Teresa Cristina, the wife of Emperor Pedro II of Brazil. Serra dos Orgaos Serra dos Orgaos features curved rock formations and hiking trails. Dedo de Dios, God's Finger, is one of the most distinct profiles, resembling a hand pointing to the sky. Olinda, Pernambuco Founded in 1535 by the Portuguese Duarte Coelho, it was one of the most important cities of colonial Brazil due to its port and sugar industry. It's an exceptional ensemble of churches, monasteries, palaces, and houses dating from the 16th to the 18th century. The convent of San Francisco is the oldest Franciscan monastery in Brazil. Fortaleza, Ceará This city has been the cradle of many Brazilian artists, especially foro musicians, a traditional musical genre from northeast Brazil. It's the closest Brazilian capital to Europe, with warm tropical weather all year round. A fortress constructed by the Dutch in the mid-17th century gave rise to the name Fortaleza. Curitiba, Paraná Cutting-edge urban planning and commitment to sustainability are trademarks of this capital. One of the city's tourist spots is the Curitiba Botanical Garden, opened in 1991 with an iconic greenhouse inspired by London's Crystal Palace. The Wire Opera House, completed in 1992, is a structure made of steel tubes, located in the middle of a lake. Tangua Park stands out for its lakes and a lookout with a panoramic view of the city. Brasilia, Federal District It's been the capital of Brazil since 1960.
This place stands out for its modernist architecture and distinctive urban layout. Brazil's most important government buildings are located in Brasilia. The Metropolitan Cathedral of Nossa Senhora Aparecida has a contemporary design. From the outside, it looks like a crown made of concrete and glass. Terra Runca Cave, Goiás This natural site remains unknown to international tourists, but it is a treasure for those interested in geological wonders. It's a massive cave system, though only a small fraction has been explored and mapped. Displaying a myriad of colors from the minerals they contain, the stalactites and stalagmites grow impressively large. The La Pa River flows through the cave, bringing it to life and contributing to its formation over thousands of years. Blue Hole, Bahia You'll find exceptionally clear water within this submerged cave. Under the sunlight, the well's water takes on a blue hue. Fossils of prehistoric animals thousands of years old have been found here. Pinya Convent, Espirito Santo. This sanctuary stands on a rock overlooking the city of Vila Vela, neighboring Vitoria, and the entrance to Vitoria Bay. Its construction began in 1558 and was founded by the Spanish friar Pedro Palacios. According to legend, the friar brought an image of the Virgin, which used to disappear and reappear where the convent was later erected. Jenny Pabu, Rio Grande do Norte. In Jenny Pabu, the expansive dunes constantly transform. The desert landscape contrasts with the lush tropical vegetation and coconut trees lining the coast. Among the dunes, you'll find the Jenny Pabu Lagoon, a freshwater oasis where visitors can cool off. Petra Azul, Espirito Santo. It's a natural stone monument. At specific times of the day, sunlight reflection gives it a bluish tint. Depending on the lighting and atmospheric conditions, the stone can exhibit dozens of different shades. Sierra de Capivara National Park, Piauí
There are thousands of paintings and engravings on the walls of these caves and cliffs. Daily life, rituals, and animals are the subjects depicted in these paintings. Through these artworks, we gain a view into the prehistoric history of the Americas. Some of the artifacts and paintings found in Sierra de Capivara suggest that humans inhabited the region much earlier than previously thought. Itataia National Park, Rio de Janeiro, and Minas Gerais. It's the oldest national park in Brazil, established in 1937. Located in the Mantiqueira Mountains, a broad mountain range. In the lower area is the Atlantic Forest, a threatened biome. The Agujas Negras Hill, with its pointed shape, is the highest point of the park. Santa Catarina Island Santa Catarina. This island, where the city of Florianopolis is located, is a place full of charm and beauty. It's the largest island of an archipelago, consisting of over 20 islands. Laguna de Conciasao is a saltwater lagoon situated in the center of the Santa Catarina. Campeche Island to the east is a small island but with rich biodiversity. To visit such small islands, there's also the option of going to French Island, to the north. Amazon Theater. Amazon. As a living representation of the rubber boom in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, this building stands out as one of the most iconic in Manaus. Its construction began in 1884, aiming to create a cultural space, reflecting the wealth and grandeur of the region at that time. Church of Sao Bento and Carneiro's Beach, Pernambuco. Dating from the 18th century, this chapel is small but picturesque. It stands by the sea, offering a highly photogenic setting popular among visitors. Pedra da Gavia, Rio de Janeiro. Overlooking Rio, this mountain is in the heart of the Tijuca Forest. Located by the sea, it stands as one of the largest granite monoliths in the world.
On one of its sides is a formation resembling a human face, which has given rise to various legends. Rio de Janeiro Carnival It's the world's most famous carnival, a burst of colors, music, dance, and creativity that captures the vibrant and passionate essence of Brazilian culture. Although the carnival has roots dating back to the ancient Roman and Greek pagan festivals, the Brazilian version has incorporated African and local elements. The Sambo Dromo was built specifically for the carnival festivities. It's a long corridor flanked by stands where Samba schools parade and compete. Each school presents a different theme, narrated through floats, costumes, and dance routines. During Carnival, the whole city transforms. Besides the parades in the Sambo Dromo, there are street parties called blocos, dances, concerts, and other events throughout the city's neighborhoods. Arael de Cabo, Rio de Janeiro. Thanks to its dazzling beaches and rich marine life, this place has earned the nickname Brazilian Caribbean. Located in the lakes region of the state of Rio de Janeiro, It is especially famous for its white sand beaches and crystal clear waters. Capitolio Canyons, Minas Gerais. This place, despite its beauty, has been the scene of fatal accidents and presents dangers. Being sedimentary rock formations, there's a risk of landslides. These giant rock geomorphologies are bathed by the waters of the Furnas Reservoir. As the reservoir water entered, it transformed the area into the Furnas Lake. They are geological bodies, mainly composed of rock, with vertical or nearly vertical walls. Barraco das Araras, Mato Grosso do Sol. Located in Bonito, it's considered the largest sinkhole in South America. The sinkhole is inhabited by various bird species, though red macaws are the most sought after. After transforming the place for ecotourism, a pair of macaws were released, and later a reserve was created. Thus we come to the end of this tour of Brazil. I hope you enjoyed it. Until the next journey.